Welcome to our service of worship for this day of celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. Welcome to you who are here and those who are participating either in the parsonage or at home. We welcome you all. As you've seen in the last week and a half, uh, there's been a surge, a spiking in coronavirus um, uh, infections. So we are no longer, we've entered into the the um, severe um, warning uh, risk uh, assessment by the government, so we're not to sing at this point, uh, even at a speaking level in the congregation, but we do have two singers to lead us in our, in our worship. So inwardly we can still sing, of course. And you're also welcome to take your masks off when you're sitting or when you're standing in your, in your places, but when you're moving the church, you have to put them back on. Let us begin with our opening song. Open it. worship booklets on the first page. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also so with you. Let us kneel to pray. inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Lord of all power and might, for the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us in, with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the book of Romans from St. Paul, chapter 6. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you were once pre presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves <coughs> to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you were now, which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death, but now, that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they've been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And Jesus asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said seven. He directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the people, and they set them before the crowd. And they had also a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them, and they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full, and there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In these last Two Sundays and today's reading have been related to a certain part of who we are. It's called the irascible part of our soul. That, asp that part of our soul which responds to perceived threats. It's also called the spirited part of us. Um, that which spurs us into action. Flight, running away, fight, stop and confront, or freeze, do nothing. Are three ways we can respond to perceived threats. Last week I spoke about the fight response, about the response of anger, and I said something a bit incorrectly, theologically, so I wanted to correct that first. <laughs> there was a bit of heresy. 
I said that God has anger, so we, being in his image, should be also angry sometimes. But God, as the first article of religion says, God is without body, parts, or passions. So he doesn't change. Sometimes he's angry, sometimes he's kind. He's always love, pouring out, pouring forth. Our experience when we're, wa- when we're walking towards him is love, embrace, and arms. When we turn away from him, we experience anger. <laughs> it seems to us as if it's his anger, but it's his love. It is experienced in another. It's related to us, not to God's change. So with that correction, <laughs> um, it's more easy to see why we might flee, hiding, literally or emotionally, or fight, such as getting angry in the face of a threat or perceived injustice. But today, we're going to look at freezing in the face of a a danger. And this is a situation where we are immobilized, where we are not moving in our spiritual life. The ancient words for this are axity or sloth. If you've seen a creature called in English, a sloth that moves very slowly up a tree. It's wonderful to see them. (laughs) They're they're very slow in their actions. But in the spiritual life, our definition of sloth, it it may be that we sit at our homes on on a couch all day not accomplishing anything, and Paul writes against that elsewhere, encouraging us to work. But in the modern world, in the West, I think it's more often looks different. Sloth can happen when a person is very busy, but is not accomplishing much in a spiritual sense. We can be highly distracted in our work, throwing ourselves into it, but forgetting why we're doing it. Remember how Israel was held in bondage by Pharaoh. He kept, and they wanted to go for a Sabbath rest. He said, what, you've got time on your hands? He increased their workload so they would not, so that they would forget who they really were. But God had other ideas for them, leading them out of slavery into the promised land. And his idea was the development of human beings in his likeness. And he has these same plans for us. Being really busy is not a virtue in itself. It depends on what we are busy with. Two other examples of sloth um, I've mentioned before, but I don't think it hurts to repeat, as some will not have heard it as well. In the early church, the Desert Fathers noted a certain experience of monks in his cell. Evagrius says, the demon of axity or sloth, also called the noonday demon in Psalm 90, is the most oppressive of all demons. He attacks the monk at about 10 a.m and besieges his soul until 2 p.m. First of all, he makes it appear that the sun moves slowly, or not at all, and that the day seems as 50 hours long. Then he compels the monk to look constantly toward the windows, to jump out of his cell, to watch the sun, to see how far it is from 3 p.m., to look this way and that. What's the modern equivalent of this? Well, have you found yourself staring at the windows of your computer, (laughs) surfing the net, from one news item to the next with no real aim, or to look at what this person is doing, what that person. Excessively interested in trivial news items. I say excessively because it's okay to um, look at the odd trivia. Do WhatsApp and Facebook and news sites, are they taking up a lot of your time? They should probably take some of your time because a lot of that's pretty good exchange. Uh, But is it taking up a lot of your time? Axity or sloth is the turning of our minds to what is insubstantial, to staring at the dust, when the heavens above are revealing their glory, and the image and likeness of God is staring at us, in our loved ones and our neighbors whom we're ignoring. A third example of sloth, being continually discontented with our current circumstances so that everything looks better elsewhere. Cassian, bringing insight from the Desert Father, says, the monk cries up distant monasteries and those which are a long way off and describes such places as more profitable and better suited for salvation. He seems to himself worn out and wearied as if with a long journey. The equivalent for us would be 
dissatisfaction with our current church and beginning to think that life might be better elsewhere or it could be dissatisfaction with our spouse or family and thinking it would be so much better elsewhere. What it could be is avoiding the difficult task of learning to love in our current circumstances. It could be avoiding a necessary confronting of ourselves and our need to change. It could be avoiding the difficult challenges of love, of calling others to account around us, or forgiving those who've offended us, or asking forgiveness of those who we've offended. I had asked myself this when I was discerning whether it was time to leave this chaplaincy. Is it accident? I discerned that it was not. It's important that we think about this particular sin. We can endlessly distract ourselves with work, with entertainment, with searching for trivial things, with entertainment. But the question is, in all this activity, are we growing in love? When we look at our lives, is there a transcendence? And by that I mean, is there a drawing closer to God and our neighbor in our activity? Or are we doing, just doing stuff to fill the time? when really there's a kind of despair behind this senseless activity. I think most of us would recognize this happening sometimes in our lives. When it happens, our true identity in Christ is being forgotten. As one writer has described it, the old sinful self is resisting transformation into the new creation in Christ. We are neither going away from God, we still come to church, we still believe, but we're not drawing nearer to God and our neighbor. We are frozen. In the epistle today, Paul speaks to us precisely about this. Paul reminds us of our old life of sin and the new life we're being called to. Maybe this is more relevant example to those who've entered the Christian faith at a later stage in life after a, a, a moral failure. I know this, this is my experience. Paul reminds such people of the zeal with which they used to seek out what was unhealthy. And what did it lead to? The hurting of ourselves and others around us. But Paul says, don't just put up that kind of zeal we had for sin to death. Desire is not meant to be destroyed, as the Buddhists teach, in order for us to have peace. Rather, that same energy, that desire, that zeal is to be redirected, Paul says. He says, just as, or in the same way that, you once presented yourselves as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members, all, the, all of our body and our, the functions of the person, present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. If we find ourselves lost in our work or surfing the net uselessly or excessively concerned about trivial things, we're to snap out of it. This is not what we're made for. Remember, God intends us for glory. In that moment, we remember or wake up to our sloth, try the Jesus prayer or some other kind of spiritual discipline, or go for a walk and reflect. Think of some act of kindness you could do to a loved one or a neighbor. Take the same time you are wasting for something spiritually upbuilding instead. It's painful and may seem pointless at first, but it leads to our sanctification. It will bear fruit. We are releasing our desire in a way that is meant to be released. And God shapes us as we step out in faith, in hope, in love. As we become slaves of God, our hearts grow bigger. The fruit you get leads to sanctif sanctification, becoming holy. At its end, eternal life. We become more the new creation in Christ, more fully a human being of God's making. In the gospel, Jesus is concerned that those who've been following him for three days might faint on their way home. So he calls on his disciples to feed them and provides the food through a miracle of grace. This is a kind of parable of our lives, isn't it? We know there are times we are close to fainting as we follow the way. Christ. We know Jesus is as concerned for us today as he was with that crowd assembled in the desolate place. 
He knows that the spiritual life for us is full of temptation to simply forget our true identity in Christ, that it's so easy to avoid our true vocation. We need spiritual strength on our journey. And Jesus provides a way by which we can both remember his love for us, giving himself up for us, do this in remembrance of me, and for us to remember our identity in him. Holy Communion is a remembrance of Jesus and his love and mercy for us, shown on the cross. But Holy Communion is not a mere remembrance. It's also efficacious, that is, it has an effect beyond remembering. In Holy Communion, we are given spiritual nourishment of that new inner person in Christ. You desire, desire upon desire. We return from the altar here, and God is within us. Eternal life is being entered into by us. The divine and human life is intermingling in us, refreshing us, inspiring us, reinvigorating us. Think about this when you come back from the altar. Pray to God in this moment of deep intimacy and forgiveness that he will stir up our desire for heavenly things. We may not waste a moment of this precious life on earth, and of our training in this life for the life of heaven. Paul says, the free gift of God is eternal life, eternal liveliness, which we begin to know now in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you receive Jesus today, either spiritually or sacramentally, remember this week, from time to time, who it is who is in you. And as Aquinas says, Love that divine good that is in you. And let us pray the collect for today. Lord of all power and might, or the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. stand and confess our faith using the words on page four. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being and the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for the participation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was deferred. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yesterday was World International Justice Day, aiming to unite in the support of justice, promoting victims' rights, preventing serious crimes, and those that put the peace, security, and well-being of the world at risk. And today is Nelson Mandela Day, declaring where poverty, injustice, and gross inequality persist in our world, no one can truly rest. With the various leaders of Areas of inequality now being exposed and exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, these concerns are to the fore. We pray that peace comes to South Africa in troubled times, that the spirit of peace and reconciliation returns to them. And as scriptures urge us to live by the spirit in God's name, May we make this wheel for all mankind through our Christian faith and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world created by your love for its nations and governments, for Queen Elizabeth and King Willem Alexander and all world leaders, that they may be wise and just working in your name to overcome the pain and suffering in the world in places of conflict, hunger and human misery. Lord, in your mercy. In the wake of the terrible flooding disasters which have afflicted Western Germany, parts of France and the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Southern Belgium, we pray for those who have suffered loss of life, injury, loss of home, and terror, and for those trying to help them. As suggested by a bishop from Psalm 69, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those of all faiths persecuted and attacked for their beliefs and for a revelation of your spirit to those who carry out such acts of violence and persecution. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, created for your glory, that its ministry may reflect those works of yours. For our archbishops, Justin and Stephen, and the leaders of all churches in communion with us. For our bishops, Robert and David, Archdeacon Sam, for David, as he plans his next steps in ministry, and for all who minister to us now and in the future at Holy Trinity. We pray also for ourselves, living our daily lives in faith. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy, and grace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for families and individuals 
created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying, and for those, my name aloud or in our hearts, who have asked for our prayers. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you who have joined with your saints above and for any whose anniversaries occur this week. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity as we worship you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continuing in prayer. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, for we resolve to keep God's commandments, to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Offertory hymn, we have an opportunity to make an offering, a bank transfer. We don't have a collection at the church. Uh, there's two numbers given one for the regular work of the church and one for charitable givings. And this uh, Sunday and next Sunday, we're remembering <coughs> St. Dane Nile Valley, which is a charity that's set up by Reverend jo- Jos Strengel to help improve the life and social environment for the poorest in Egypt. They do this by supporting and working together with churches of, and Christian organizations in Egypt, especially in the fields of education, medical aid, and socioeconomic support. It sometimes involves personal help from the foundation, but it usually involves financial support for local projects. Our operatory hymn is Over a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
here on page seven in our booklets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and at all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For he is our great High Priest, who has loosed us from our sins and made us to be a royal priesthood to you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in this Holy Gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Grace is the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. 
Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses, and fit us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours. Almighty Father, forever and ever. Do not presume to come to this table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, where our heart is so much as to gather up the Christ of the Lord of the Lord. But you are the same. Those of you who are not able to see, receive sacramentally today, I invite you to an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you offer yourself to us in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Preserve your body and soul into everlasting life. They give you this in remembrance. Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take it, eat this in remembrance. Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. kneel to pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Stand.
Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Uh, quick announcements that uh, there is uh, welcome again to all of you who are participating from home and in the parsonage. There is opportunity uh, to uh, join in coffee hour by Zoom after the service if you're there. Um, if you're here or in the parsonage, there's coffee hour in the garden afterwards. So you're welcome to come for that. Um, I think that's the announcements for today. Uh, we'll keep our eyes and pray for the reduction of these. Um, and going down to another risk level soon. Um, let's pray so that we can sing again out loud and even more fully when it goes way down. Um, tonight, or today, um, we asked uh, Brianna and Christiana to come. Uh, they were going to come on the, the 25th, so we don't quite have everything we wanted to have for you ready. <laughs> but um, we have a few things. Uh, well, yeah. Um, uh, Brianne, and, uh, when I first came to the parish eight years ago, the chaplaincy, I was meeting um, in the, I think it was in September or something, at the Fink Jensen's house, and I was, uh, they were talk, ask, just meeting people, and they were asking me what is happening, what's going to be going on, and I said, well, one of the things we're hoping to do is to have a contemporary gospel music uh, during, on the all-age worship services, and uh, Brianne said, Wow, we just started a band. <laughs> well, it's Mar Mar uh, Maria uh, Van, uh, Van Ort who had started this, and he had started playing, and they uh, offered to come, and they began to play here. And uh, a couple years after that, Maria began to uh, be involved. Uh, well, uh, did not want to lead here any. She was involved in other music elsewhere. And Brian took over, leading that, choosing the music, uh, organizing the band, the worship band, and... Um, uh, so um, he's been doing an amazing job here. And then how many years ago was it, Christiana, that you began to? Two years, Two years? maybe a little longer. Um, but uh, so Brian uh, is singing also and playing the guitar and, and uh, Christiana uh, played, plays saxophone. And we had this kind of uh, lyrical and joyful addition to the band, which was really beautiful. and. Uh, uh, I still think when I, I can hear it in my mind, uh, your addition to the, to the uh, music, it's been a, a great uh, um, gift to us to, for you to express your, your, your gifts this way. God began with uh, the people of Israel. Um, there were dances after they went through the, the and singing after they went through the, um, the uh, Red Sea. There was, uh, David uh, took up the harp to calm Saul's soul that was troubled, and you have been doing this for us um, over the last eight years, so thank you so much. And one of the things, uh, the, the, um, uh, uh, Brian was wanting to give back the, uh, the guitar he was, uh, that was bought by the congregation, and we want to give that to him as a, a remembrance, a, a, a fond uh, thank you and a, a remembrance of us but also to continue you in your ministry wherever you are. Also, there's a gadget which has, I think, a, a microphone and you can plug it in somewhere. Um, is that right? A jack, uh, you can take all that stuff too so that you can plug in wherever you go <laughs> and continue your ministry. So um, let's give a hand for um, Brian and Christiana and, and give thanks for their ministry here among us in music. Maybe I could say a prayer over you. They've moved to Chauda, that's why they're leaving. They're finding a church locally uh, there. They'll participate, I understand, for a year before being involved musically, but then they want, they, they're going to be willing to offer their gifts again there. So, and they may come occasionally, they said, to fill in if we need somebody on a, a, a sun, first Sunday of the month or third Sunday of the month. So, let us pray. Father, thank you for the gifts uh, you've uh, poured out upon Brianna and Christiana for their um, uh, faithfulness in their work in this ministry over the years here. We pray your continued blessing upon them where they go um, and uh, that you would uh, and, and help them in enlivening our worship and um, 
helping us to lift our hearts and minds to your heavenly throne. All these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us stand for our final hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.